So a lot of people were surprised to hear that we took this RV all the way from South Carolina up to Canada for just a long weekend. Today I'm going to show you guys some of the apps that we use and also talk about the border crossing. See what it's like going into Canada and then of course going back to the United States in a motorhome. We've never done that before so I'll show you guys what that was like and any issues that we had with that. Also going to show you guys what we found to be the best campground to see Niagara Falls on the Canadian side and how we utilize our e-bikes which was a total game changer and really a lot of fun. So first off, it's about 12 hours to get from South Carolina up to Canada. You could do that all in one shot. We've done that before, but what we found works the best is we left after work on Friday around six o'clock. So we just keep going until we get tired. And typically for me, that's around midnight and we alternate a little bit. Kimberly now has been driving. I, mean, she, I think on that drive, she drove for about two hours. I lay down, took a little nap while we were driving and that was just, super helpful. I mean, I'd never been able to sleep while we were driving before and that was amazing. Uh, so we drove to about midnight and then the first thing for us that really helps a lot is like we don't really want to pay for a campsite when we're showing up at midnight and leaving really early. We use the All Stays app, which has been amazing. It has all the campsites on it that you would want. You can sort it by Walmarts, and within the app, it actually shows you when people actually have stayed at the Walmart, they give a review for how good that Walmart was, if they were okay with people parking there, where they parked, if it was level, if they felt safe, if it was loud, all those things. They also have Cracker Barrels listed in there that usually have RV sites, RV specific parking spots there. As I'm starting to get tired, Kimberly will pull up the app, look at what places are close to us, and then we'll just find a Walmart or whatever, pull in, pull the shades up, turn the generator on, get it cooled off, or just leave the cab running with the AC going. And it wasn't super hot, so that wasn't that big of a deal. And we get about six or seven hours of sleep, wake up around six or 7 a.m., maybe go in and get any last minute groceries that you need from Walmart, which is super helpful, or in our case this time, some coffee, and then get on the road. And then it's about six hours. I try to get at least halfway the night before. And so we ran till around midnight or 1 a.m. So we had about five or six hours left the next morning. And what was really cool along the way, the, the route that we took was really pretty. We pulled off at a really pretty overlook in West Virginia. I mean, I'd never been on this route before. I ended up flying the drone there and just watching the sunrise come up. And it was just, it was great. Then we, you know, we ended up getting, we took our time there. I think we showed up around one o'clock. We had to go through the Canadian border crossing first. Once we got to the border crossing, because it was a holiday weekend on a Saturday, we showed up there around one o'clock in the afternoon and it was pretty busy. I mean, it probably took us maybe a half hour to get across the bridge there and then go through security. The Canadian crossing was not very well marked, I will say. So the RVs had one designated lane that you were supposed to go to. I believe it was lane nine. I'll have to go back and check the video. Uh, but you basically bear left and then go to the far right. You kind of weave your way through. You go to the lane nine, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank so you. Can... No, appreciate it. Very nice here. And uh, once we got up there, they just asked us to park and then go inside. So that's what they did. They asked us if we had brought any uh, fruits or vegetables with us, which we had not. Um, and then they, the only thing they asked us if we had any fireworks, firearms, or pepper spray. I was really surprised to see that pepper spray is apparently illegal in Canada. We don't have pepper spray on us, uh, thankfully. And you know, they were at, she was a sticky bush. She's like, if I search your vehicle and I, I won't find pepper spray, right? And I was like, no, and so it's kind of threatened us to search the vehicle for pepper spray, uh, but we, we don't have any. Um, so definitely make sure that you check the list that they have on their website. I'll put a link to their list of all the things that you can and can't have uh, on our website. I'll make like a more detailed post of this that I'll put in the description of this video. Uh, but there was definitely a sticking point on pepper spray, so just know that. Um, they didn't actually search the RV, they just checked our passports and then along we went. Asked us how long we were staying and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, so we drove through. We did have to pay an easy pass toll of I think $3.75 or something like that. Um, that's another thing that, that is very helpful, especially if you're driving in the Northeast. Uh, anybody can sign up for an easy pass. We live in South Carolina, we don't have the easy pass system there, but it's, we just went on the Virginia easy pass website and I'll put a link to that in the description too. And it's free to sign up for an Easy Pass. We have a bumper mounted Easy Pass for the RV, and you just drive through it, scans it, and you're good to go. Much easier than having to stop and try to have exact change or whatever. That, that's been a nightmare. So having the Easy Pass is awesome. But yeah, once we got through there, the, the campsite wasn't too far from the border crossing, and there weren't a whole lot of campgrounds directly at Niagara Falls on the Canadian side, but the one that we found here, this Riverside 
uh, park, motel, and campground was the best mix for us because we really want to use our e-bikes. We want to be able to bike to Niagara Falls. And this one was directly on Greater Niagara Circle Route, which that route, the bike route is amazing. It's 87 miles and it connects Lake Erie to Lake Ontario, runs along both coastlines and then back along another place kind of more inland. We only did the section from our campsite up to Niagara Falls and back, which was about 10 miles. And our e-bikes, I mean, that's not, not that big a deal. Even on a regular bike, it's totally fine. I don't think we really used our motors at all because it was pretty much flat. Uh, but just having them, if, if you did get tired, is obviously nice. And you can go a little bit faster if you want because you can use pedal assist and things like that. Uh, we both have rad power bikes. And for my wife, who suffers with a lot of chronic back pain and joint pain, and she has hypermobility, she has a lot of things that make just being on a regular bike or walking really painful. And the e-bike has been really helpful. So if you're having any mobility issues whatsoever, I would highly recommend an e-bike. Um, I'll put a link to the description on, below on our e-bikes as well. Rad Power Bikes are the ones we have. I found that for the money, they've been amazing. Uh, most of the ones, if you go in like a store, at least at the time that I was looking, it was between two and three thousand dollars for an e-bike, which I did not want to spend that much money. The Rad Power Bikes were, I think, about fifteen hundred, and so that was a much more reasonable price. Uh, you know, you can get a regular road bike that can't cost that much. So we went with those guys, and we've had them for. I mean, I've had mine almost three years now, and it's it's been really good. Uh, she's had hers for about a year and a half and we, she's like that as well. Uh, we also have, they have a referral code, so if you buy one and you would refer a friend or family that you can get 50 bucks for them off their purchase and then they'll give you a $50 Amazon gift card. We have one of those codes too, so if you're interested in buying one of the bikes, I'll put the code in the description below. So if you want to pick up one, you can get 50 bucks off, which is pretty cool that, that Rad does that. And their customer supports are really awesome. I, I actually recently broke the battery on mine and they still support the battery even though my model is discontinued I was able to buy a replacement battery and it was only a few hundred dollars which wasn't wasn't that bad but yeah so we ended up biking to the falls anyway back to the trip we, we biked to the falls the bike ride to the falls was really nice too I mean you're riding along the river it's really scenic there's beautiful houses there's some crazy huge mansions there's these crazy futuristic looking houses and then they're just regular brick ranch houses and you see people out riding their bikes there's people out having like little dinner parties and stuff and there's lots of little spots you can stop and look along the river and you know as you get closer to the falls you see the, you know the, the water is accelerating and you start seeing some rapids and stuff and then eventually you start seeing the spray on the horizon like a few miles away you just see the spray coming up which that was really cool i wasn't expecting to see that i mean i think it was at least three miles away that you could just see the spray from the falls and then once we get there you know there's obviously lots of shops and all this other stuff and it's kind of like a a nice version of Las Vegas around there. We only went to the falls, so I really can't comment on all the other stuff that's around there. That was pretty much all we went there to see, and then we just kind of soaked that in. And then, and then bike back. It was just really nice to be able to, to bike there. It was a very pleasant ride. And the weather, I mean, where we were in South Carolina, it was 95 degrees when we left, and it was 70 degrees with basically no humidity up in Niagara, and that was just really, really nice. It, we were basically had the same view that some of these million dollar houses had, which was really nice. The spots are pretty close together. We did have full hookup on our, our site, so we had the power, the water, and the, the sewage tank, which was which was really nice. But it wasn't, it was, it was level enough. We had to use all of our blocks to get leveled up. Uh, I'll probably buy a second set of blocks <laughs> for for that. The, we don't have automatic levelers on our RV, so we have to use just um, some blocks to kind of get things level, but that works That works pretty well. It had a nice big open field you could play soccer in, which was pretty cool. We did rode the one wheel there, which was nice. Yeah, my wife's still learning how to ride that, so that was a, really a great spot to be able to do that. Um, they had a really small general store that really didn't have much in it, so make sure you have all your all your stuff with you when you go there. But they also had firewood, and we, we had a nice fire going that even lasted through this torrential downpour that came uh, after our first night. Um, we didn't get to see the falls at night because of the rain. We were worried, you know, when you have a 10 mile bike ride back, we didn't really want to bike that in the rain if in case it rained. And we also didn't ride the boat uh, because we were worried about, you know, getting soaked and then 
taking our bikes back. So we got to watch the boat, but we didn't ride it. So that's one of the downsides of biking in. I mean, if it was a little bit warmer out, you know, I mean, I was okay with doing it, but my wife was not wanting to get soaked wet and then and then ride the bike back. So that definitely keep that in mind if you're going to do the the method that we did with the uh, the whole biking to the falls. But overall, it was it was really nice, and I I for us I couldn't see a better way since we don't have a car to actually see the falls. There are definitely a lot of people that tow cars with them, and I just I don't know our RV is 26 feet long, and I just love how easy it is to park it anywhere and not have to deal with the car. So the e-bikes for us have been a really good way to kind of keep things more minimalistic and uh, make it easier on us. I mean, I, we can actually fit our RV in just a regular parking spot if we back in and have enough space to overhang the back uh, of a few feet, which is pretty cool. We didn't have to use that really on this trip, but it's, it's nice to have that, uh, that functionality and nice to have to worry about all the things that go with towing a car. But a after we ended up biking, we ended up taking a nice leisurely drive up the coastline up to Lake Ontario and it was a really pretty drive and one thing I didn't realize at all is once you get past the falls you know you've got this big gorge that that the falls have hogged out and it's really pretty to drive along that and the Canadian side is just gorgeous along the way and a few miles north there's what they call the whirlpool which I didn't even know existed and basically the falls take like a 90 degree turn there's this big swirling whirlpool area where that that really fast paced really pretty blue water is just swirling and then turns up the falls they even have this like really old like gondola that you can ride across and it, you're actually going just across the Canadian side to the Canadian side so it looks like you might be going to the American side but you're not because of the way that the whirlpool works it was only like maybe 10 bucks to do that we ended up not doing it but it was a really cool looking thing just the the color of the water there was just really cool we hung out there for a little bit and watched the falls and then continued driving up to see Lake Ontario and it was just there was lots of vineyards along the way we ended up not stopping at any but the, if you're into wine there's a bunch of vineyards all through there just the whole area is really pretty i think even winston churchill said it was one of the prettiest drives that he'd been on the, the best way to spend his sunday afternoon or something and then we ended up coming back down south and then crossing the bridge over to the american side the traffic was even worse on that i think that took about an hour just to go through the traffic to to get to the border crossing on the american side that one was a little bit better marked they had signs all the way back saying where to go if you're a truck or an rv uh, so that was pretty clear you just kind of stayed to the right and follow the lines there uh, once we got up to the crossing the guy asked us a, a few questions how many people are on board here just two okay citizens of what country the united states where do you live? South Carolina. What are you doing in Canada? We were here to see Niagara Falls. From, well, how long is your trip away from home? Just three days. Well, John? Head back up today. Kimberly, give me some. So you just drive for a few days going back home already? Uh, what's that? So you just drove for a yeah. few days come up here? In the RV, it's not bad, right? We camped in a Walmart on the way up. So yeah. Anything to declare coming back? All no. call tobacco, food, Didn't any anything. weapons or firearms on board? No, sir. And no one else is on here? No, sir. Yeah. You guys live on the coast or what? No, it's Greenville. It's like inland. So you should be fine, right? What do you mean? Oh, I it's honestly hurricane? haven't looked at the news. Yeah, it's, Is it's it going, it's going out. Really? Yeah, it's not looking good. Has it made landfall yet? Uh, it's starting to get to Florida right chill. now. Like I, I got cousins down in Melbourne. Yeah, it's not looking pretty. Really? It was category five, now it went down to a four. That's something, I guess. But yeah, the Bahamas are destroyed. Anyway, oh. is there a door? Oh, no. On the other side, yeah. I'm gonna come through. Yep, that's fine. Unlock it. Now the American side looked kind of, I've got to say, kind of dumpy compared to the Canadian side. I mean, it really wasn't well manicured in any of the areas outside of the actual state park at Niagara. The little town just like was kind of abandoned there that right by the border crossing. But once you got into the state park there uh, for Niagara Falls, that was actually really pretty. They had an RV lot there specifically for parking your RV that was kind of toward the back of the, the park. They have a trolley system that runs through the whole park, which we didn't use because we just put our e-bikes down, but you could if you didn't have bikes to get around. And overall, the it was I think it was $10 to pay to park, which we forgot to pay because we didn't have cash and we were supposed to use the machine and they didn't ticket us. So thank you guys for not ticketing us. It was really bikeable. I mean, we biked, you could see, you can get right up to the falls on your bike. So that was really cool for my wife to be able to get right up to the falls on her e-bike and not have to go up and down the stairs and all that kind of stuff. But it was really neat. It was, you know, I gotta say, when we were on the Canadian side, I thought there was no way that we would like the American side. 
just because the you know that you have a really great view of the horseshoe on the Canadian side. But once we got to the American side, I mean, you're right next to the falls there, and that was really cool. I don't know, I gotta think, I kinda wanna do both. And there were stairs down, you can go stand underneath the falls right there, that looked really cool, which we didn't do, just, I don't know, we just didn't wanna get wet. But maybe next time, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But yeah, we ended up staying there until probably five o'clock, something like that. And then we left there and did the same thing, you know, went as far south as we could until we got too tired. You know, Kimberly was amazing and she did a little more driving for me again, which was a great help. That really helps a lot being able to nap a little bit and drove till probably midnight, uh, one o'clock in the morning again. Found a Cracker Barrel this time. This is our first time of stopping in a Cracker Barrel. That was that was fine. They did have RV spots designated. I will say, I think I generally like Walmart better because the Cracker Barrel, we were the only ones back there and it was kind of dark. It wasn't really lit. Whereas the Walmarts are all lit. You know, their, their camera's out there 24 hours. I mean, they do have designated RV spots at the Cracker Barrel, but the fact that we were the only ones there is, I don't know, maybe a little more unsettling than when you're at the Walmart. You feel maybe a little bit safer there. Uh, but yeah, we woke up again early, you know, 6 a.m. They had deliveries coming at the Cracker Barrel around 4 a.m. So that kind of woke us up a little bit. And then, you yeah, know, you don't sleep as well after that. So the Walmart was a little bit quieter from that standpoint. But then we started riding home and we did stop on the way home at this uh, Virginia Safari Park, which is a pretty cool thing. You can drive through the park and have all these animals uh, coming up to you and stuff. That was that was a pretty neat thing. But, you know, I, I don't know the the humaneness of that. It's like zoos. I, I don't know what you guys think about that stuff, but uh, I'm always a little on the fence about that. It's like I love the fact that it gets awareness to people to see these animals they would never see, which maybe helps conservation things. But at the same time, these animals are trapped there which is not cool but it didn't seem like they were super hungry i mean they they seemed well fed they were they had a pretty big area to graze around which is kind of cool um and just being able to do that in the rv was pretty cool i mean seeing zebras and stuff when you go to the bathroom in the rv is a, is a kind of a cool thing so i'd still you know recommend doing it once maybe i don't know but the the, the whole reason that we went to the, the safari park was to because kimberly really wanted to feed and pet some kangaroos like i got to do when i was in australia earlier this year and unfortunately the kangaroos were all sleeping when we were there so we didn't get to do that anyway so we, we did it. it it was it was a cool experience got to see some some stuff that we wouldn't normally see for sure and then we just left there and just kind of kept tr kept plugging on home got home you know late that afternoon but stopped and took a nap along the way and kimberly drove some along the way we kind of traded off and you know made that 12 hour drive really not that bad and we ended up doing it on a holiday weekend so we left friday after work and we had monday off for labor day and then we were able to thankfully we were able to take off tuesday as well so we had a four-day weekend so it wasn't like we just did it in two or three days i mean we, we had four days to do it but I, i'd say we probably could have done it in three days if we really wanted to i mean having one full day there still probably would have worked but overall it was amazing i'll put on our website like what all the the gas breakdown was because i mean it's definitely not free to drive this thing up there getting eight miles per gallon but i still think overall when you compare it with flying and getting a hotel and all that stuff that uh, it was probably cheaper and then for us just you know more comfortable because it's our home that we're driving with but love to know what you guys think love to know if any of you guys have been to both sides of the falls which ones you like better and if you had any other campsites that are better than than what we went for seeing niagara falls uh, you know obviously we only went to the one that we did and so I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that if you guys like this video you want to see more stuff of our our motorhome exploits uh, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and uh, shoot us a like and uh, talk at you guys later see you